Ladies and gentlemen, so that's Drafe back with another look at the World of Tanks 9.0 public test server. I've got two games here for you today featuring the updated mouse and the M103, American Tier 9 Heavy. These have, of course, had their poly counts raised and their textures adjusted. They've also had the new shader system applied to them, so they look absolutely fantastic. Now, they've also updated the M18 Hellcat, the Panther, as well as the Tortoise, a British tank destroyer. And uh, that, of course, joins the new T-54, the Sherman, and Tiger. I believe Wave 3 will feature the Centurion, Mark 7-1, and you better believe I cannot wait to see that sucker with a higher poly count and the uh, updated shader system. Now, for the purpose of this video, I decided to go ahead and leave the tanks camouflage free. If you are wanting to see what these things look like with different camo patterns and perhaps uh, different loadouts and whatnot, then I would suggest downloading the test client on your own. I'll, of course, have a link in the description below for that. There's definitely a lot more to look at than just the HD tank models. For example, historical battles alone, in my opinion, is worth any extra downloading you might have to do to get on here. It's uh, one of those modes that I'll probably be spending most of my time in once it goes live. But uh, I wanted to bring you some footage of the HD Panther in a historical matchup. Except I kept getting timed out of the Q system, which means there weren't enough people uh, wanting to play historical. There was about 12,000 people online. Perhaps there will be more... Uh, during the night, but uh, it was unfortunate. This is, after all, the test server. You'd think that people would be testing such a new critical game mode, but uh, it is what it is, and uh, I'm sure people are just excited to play around with all the credits, gold, and XP that they're given, and uh, just wanting to unlock things because they don't have access to them on the live server. Now, in regards to the updated model for the mouse, it's looking pretty good, even better when you put some camouflage on it, but... Uh, you know, it's one of those things where it looks great and all. It's just unfortunate that it doesn't really perform as well as it used to. Or that it's just been replaced by better tanks. It seems like if you're going to go German heavies, then most people end up with an E100. It's kind of sad because, as I've said many times, I started World of Tanks in beta. And uh, back then, the mouse was probably the most lethal tank in the game. You had to gang up on it if you ever wanted to take it out. Nowadays, the gun calibers are so high, the premium rounds are, you know, there for credits, and uh, there's just bigger and better tanks. Most people are probably gonna go with an E100 if they have the choice. It's kind of sad in a way. You almost wish that uh, they would somehow make it useful again. But again, I'm no real expert on the tank. Uh, perhaps some people are still enjoying it. I didn't really notice that many people playing it on the test server. I guess they didn't really care that much. I just wanted to take a look at the new models, and uh, I don't know. I still kind of want one, in a way, just because it really has a neat look to it. If anything, I'm sure it's still a great side scraper. I really wasn't uh, taking advantage of that feature, but uh, this match, I just didn't feel the need to. My team was doing pretty good, so I just uh, kept pressing forward. One thing I definitely have to mention, though, you look at these updated models, but then you listen to the horrible sound effects that they have. The engine sounds have been the same since beta, and I'm starting to wonder if they're ever going to change them. Now, I've heard and read about the fact that they want to eventually, but it's not something that seems to ever come up. It's almost like it's the one thing that people don't complain about enough and I have to say that sound is something often overlooked by devs and publishers. It's really important. It's critical to the amount of immersion uh, you get in any game, especially a game about tanks. I want to hear the roar of some of these engines. If you ever watch a tank video or have been to a military museum or a tank show where they have these suckers driving around, they sound fantastic. And I want that in the game, and it's sad that they haven't taken the time to do that. Wargaming is now an extremely wealthy company. I'm sure they can afford to take a day to go out with some recording equipment and capture some sounds. I mean, War Thunder did it. I'm sure they don't want to be bested by one of their competitors. So Wargaming, get on it. 
I almost wonder why they didn't add the uh, spare fuel tank on the back of this beast. You can see the spot for it, and I've seen it in some photographs. I don't know if uh, it would be considered a weakness of sorts or not, but I think it would be kind of interesting. They've got a lot more polygons to play with these days, and uh, the mouse model in itself is fairly basic, so I think they could have done it. Perhaps there's another reason for it, though. We didn't really see a whole lot of action this match, but uh, the purpose of this video is mostly just to take a look at the new models. I wouldn't really expect to come on the test server and have great games. There's a lot of trolls and scumbags in general that show up, especially uh, late at night or during the weekends. Don't really hang around too long, or you'll just want to uh, slam your face against a wall. It's interesting to think that one day all of the tanks will be high poly counts, uh, or HD as they've been called, and uh, they're going to look fantastic. I can't wait to see all of them driving around. I think it's going to breathe new life into some old tanks that I've just kind of forgotten about. Uh, I think you get tired of a tank after a while and you move on to something that sits in the garage or maybe you even sell it. You know, just seeing these things updated in some cases has made me want to repurchase them. And I think on top of that, with historical battles, that's another reason that I even want to rebuy some of my old uh, classic tanks. However, that does, of course, uh, require credits, which I am low on, and uh, I am trying to grind my way up the British Tank Destroyer line, so I don't even really have enough to afford the Tortoise, so that's not going to happen for a very long time. But I thought that I would just show you around the mouse a little bit more while we're in the garage, and uh, we're going to transition into a game with the American Tier 9 Heavy M103. Ah, the good old M103. You know, I had some really good games in this beast, especially with the uh, fully upgraded gun. The major uh, disadvantage to it, of course, is the size of the turret. From the side, you just can't miss it, and if artillery hits you, it's good night, sweet prince. But uh, if you can manage to get into a good peekaboo situation, it's a fantastic vehicle, and it really doesn't have that giant tumor that the E5 has. Plus, with the Tier 9 matchmaking the way it is, sometimes you just end up in better battles. In fact, I can probably say that I've had way more battles that were to my liking in the 103 than I have had with the E5, unfortunately. Now, of course, the model itself is looking fantastic. Uh, a lot of great attention to detail and the new shader effects are definitely getting the job done. You can see it a lot when you're looking at the turret, which we'll see more in the garage after this match. But uh, there's even a manufacturer stamp that you can find on a lot of the tanks now, which is also a nice little touch. Uh, great attention to detail, but uh, you can notice a lot of the work done on the 103. I think they chose it as one of the first tanks to redo because of the size of the turret. You can just really get a good glimpse of uh, how the uh, casting process works in a way. You know, I think that Wargaming is going to make a killing off their next few patches for a variety of reasons, but primarily a lot of people are going to come back to take a look at the visuals. A lot of people are going to come back because they're interested in the historical battles. A lot of people are going to rebuy tanks just because they have a new look. I'm going to rebuy tanks for historical battles, I'm pretty sure. For example, I sold my Panther tank. I wasn't having much fun with it. I felt like in random battles it was just mediocre at best. You might disagree with me, that's fine, but I just wasn't having fun with it. I think in historical battles it's probably going to be a fantastic tank. Mostly because in a video game like this, it doesn't have its flaws. It's not unreliable, and it's not going to break down on you. So therefore, it has nice frontal armor and a decent gun. So in historical battles, it's probably going to shine. So I'm definitely going to want to uh, repurchase it. You know, speaking of historical battles, I can't help but wish that it was also some sort of hardcore mode. How many of you out there would love to see historical battles be a mode where there are no more hit points, there are no more invisible tanks, you can't see through bushes, everything becomes really realistic, even just if it's a third person game, imagine if we could get that type of lethality out of World of Tanks, imagine if there could be a place for 
people that wanted that type of gameplay. Would that be so bad? Would a lot of people complain? Do you think that a lot of people just wouldn't play it because it was more realistic? I know it's never been Wargaming's goal to create a simulation or a more realistic or gritty game, but would it hurt it so much? I mean, Historical Battles is already an entirely different type of mode that you have to queue up for, which means that fewer people are probably going to play it. It's almost like if you're going to go historical, then just go all the way and remove some of the silly mechanics. I think it would just be a really fantastic title. I think it would add an even greater amount of variety to the game. I think a lot of new players would discover World of Tanks. I think a lot of players would come back to the game. I think it would then be direct competition with War Thunder because, let's face it, most people going to War Thunder want something more realistic. Even though currently in the closed beta forums, there seems to be a ton of people that are trying to turn that game into World of Tanks, unfortunately. And Gaijin, in some cases, seems to be listening because, well, they like money. Now, of course, there would need to be a lot more developmental work. Not that they don't have the staff or money to do it, but uh, it would require some time. They'd have to add a bullet drop system. They'd have to really take into account velocity. They would have to uh, tweak the damage model in order to incorporate one-shot kills, death of crewmen and whatnot. Uh, there's a lot that would have to go into it, but if they did it, they could really put themselves in a place to absolutely dominate the tank game genre, at least the third person. Uh, tank game genre and uh, you know from a business point of view I don't see how that is something that they could avoid but again I think that they're the type of developer that really just wants to stick with their original vision and I don't think we'll ever see any type of hardcore mode but you know I can dream right I'm sure many of you are thinking that I'm crazy and that I should just leave well enough alone. I should just enjoy this game for what it is. And I do. I do enjoy World of Tanks. Otherwise, I would be sitting here making these videos about it. I had to take a vacation from it, but uh, I'm back and I'm enjoying it again. There are things that will always frustrate me. I'll never think that invisible tanks and hit points are a good idea in this type of game, but I can still enjoy it for what it is. War Thunder is an option, but I see them making mistakes as well, and I wish that uh, you could take the best of this game and the best of that game and mix them together, and you would probably end up with the ultimate tank game. Now, these online tank titles, they're starting to become a dime a dozen. A lot of developers and publishers are wanting to jump into this genre. They see the potential, and I think if Wargaming were to add a realistic or hardcore mode, then that would only benefit them the capital increase would be through the roof, and in fact, it would probably put some hurt on War Thunder. And you might be thinking, Sidestrafe, why would you want that? Because I'm not a fanboy. I don't pledge my allegiance to one game. I want there to be a lot of great, successful titles. Ladies and gentlemen, competition breeds excellence, and we are the winners at the end of that battle. With that said, I will see you on the next one.